in her office in my university health center, my therapist told me, Patrick, I'm sure it won't be much of a surprise if I tell you I think you've been dealing with some pretty severe depression and anxiety, and I thought, you know, makes sense. Um, I'd been struggling since at least high school, if not earlier, but it really reached its peak in college. Um, between the combination of external things, my father's alcoholism, his passing away, a few other family members passing away, my own body image, as well as the overwhelming workload of college, the stress, feeling like I had no one that I felt comfortable with, no one that I could even talk to or knew, the unfamiliar setting. I got to a point of pretty severe suicidal tendencies, but one of the most oppressive or suffocating aspects of my depression was that isolation, that shame. The irony of the depression is that one of the few things that could offer you the most help is one of the things that depression prevents you from doing the most, which is reaching out or seeking help or talking. So as I was trying to deal with this, I did what I often do now, which is write a poem. And that poem dealt a lot with my attempts to seek help and how I would go about that. So this poem is in the voice of my phone, the one thing that could help me reach out, but was also the thing that I used to hide the most. And this poem is called Siri. New message from mom. Have a great day. I'll call you later. Have fun at class. I love you. Sending message. OK. It's always like this. She sends caring, thoughtful paragraphs. He speaks like the Hulk. But I know he calls mom almost every day, like he just needs to hear her. Then he hangs up. New message from best friend. How are you holding up? Typing. 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 It's always like this. He hopes his friends will always be there, like family, but not like family. <laughs> New message from mom. Call me when you get a chance. Calling mom. Before he hangs up, he does not tell her he loves her. He does not tell her he is unhappy. I know that he is. I have sent the messages. I have made the calls. 2 o'clock a.m., 3 o'clock a.m., 5 o'clock a.m. No one makes calls at 5 o'clock a.m. <laughs> Who are you calling at 5 o'clock a.m.? No one will answer. No one is awake. New message from best friend. I really think you should talk to your family about this, at least your mom. Why can't you? Typing. I'm not myself in my own home. My family doesn't actually know me. They talk to my shadow, the boy I leave behind. But I don't think I need them. I have the friends I've picked and kept and clung to. I'm comfortable with them. I'm not comfortable with my family, or I'm just scared to be. Do you want to send this message? No. Deleting message. Sending message. I just can't. I can't talk to my family. I can't call my mom. Did you say call mom? No. <laughs> Canceling. Opening voicemails. He does not tell anyone. He still has ones from his dead father. He will not delete them. He will not delete dead grandparents' contact information. He will not delete anything. He is collecting memories and ghosts. Would you like me to search the internet for ghosts? Ghosts, dead, haunting, not moving on, never moving on, never letting go, he never lets go. New message from best friend. Maybe it's hard to believe, but everyone does love you. Your family loves you. I mean, I know your mom loves you. Just don't forget that, OK? Calling mom. Thank you.